Welcome to this Perspective on Israel interview. My name is Tobias Pettersson and I'm the director of the Swedish think tank uh, Perspective on Israel. And with me here today I have this guest from Israel, Mr. Kuri Gilschuster. He is the director of the International Program in Conflict Resolution and Mediation Studies at Tel Aviv University. But also he has this project uh, that he's the founder of, the Ask Project. And I will give you some information about this project, how you can describe it in one way, and then I will let Mr. Gil Schuster um, talk about it. It has 71,000 followers on YouTube, over 30 million views, and 617 videos. So that's one way of describing it. Can you describe what is the Ask Project? Um, it's a, allowing Israelis and Palestinians to describe what they think mm -hmm. about the conflict or about their culture or society in their own words. And that's kind of its purpose. Um, it's kind of a reaction to the way media or activists um, use elements, usually in video or sometimes in the media, um, to uh, you know, be very pro-Israel or very pro-Palestinian, I really wanted to show what people really thought about all these things and leave out what the politicians think, because I mm -hmm. really don't care. Mm -hmm. Although the politicians actually make the agreements, and if there was ever a peace agreement between Israel, Israelis and Palestinians, they're the ones to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's way too much focus on what they say and what they think. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather know uh, what the average person on the street thinks. Did you have any uh, inspiration for this project before you started? No, not really. It was, I mean, it, the inspiration was um, being online in uh, Facebook groups and, and uh, forums and people fighting, always outsiders, never Israelis, never Palestinians on the ground, always fighting about something, some aspect of the conflict, making claims that I was living in Israel already for 15 years didn't match, at least on the Israeli side, um, how, th how I saw things anyways. So they would always find a clip of an Israeli Jew saying something which was very contradictory to what everything I knew. And of course, you can always find somebody in any society who's going to have whatever opinion you want. Um, but they would use that as saying, aha, this is what Israelis think, or this is what Israel, you know, or he's the right type of Israeli, or, or the wrong type of Israeli, racist type, or whatever you wanted, however they wanted to um, focus on. Um, and I said, okay, that's interesting. And you know, maybe that's helpful to them, but that's not reality. And so I think it's more important to understand what reality is, why. Um, I studied conflict studies, so I did a master's in conflict studies, I started a PhD in conflict studies. If you want to solve a conflict, you need to understand what the conflict is really about. And if we're always going after some uh, misconception, misunderstanding, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter, um, we're never going to get to a peace treaty. Um, so, for example, what, what actually one of the things that had an impact on me was the Oslo process um, of making peace with Palestinians. So, during I lived in Israel during the Oslo process, just after it was implemented. I, I moved there in 1995, really. Um, I couldn't understand why buses were blowing up. Mm -hmm. If the Palestinians wanted peace, why were there constantly buses every few weeks blowing up um, and Palestinians um, killing people, including somebody's um, aunt who I know? Um, it didn't it didn't make sense to me. So why was this a very strong reaction on, from the Hamas side of, of the Palestinians? And at the same time, visiting Palestinian cities and seeing how they did support peace in some ways, um, the, the, the media didn't seem to be doing a very good job about why it was failing on both sides. And that's a whole other story. But from each group's uh, perspective, each is going to have a different take on why that happened. And so I wanted to be, for the next one, if we ever do have another agreement with Palestinians or anything, I want to know what each side thinks about it before, during, and, and after. Mm -hmm. So I'm better, this is my own selfish thing, I want to be better prepared to, so I, I know what's coming. So has working with this project made you change your views on the conflict? Yeah, um, in certain ways, not totally. I don't think, I don't vote any differently. I kind of vote, I, I don't like to tell people how I voted before because they, they think I'm, I'm coming from that direction. But I tend to vote kind of sort of center left anyways um, because those are my values. But um, uh, I realized that on the Palestinian side that the right wing in Israel is more correct in their analysis of Palestinians or how Palestinians see things. Mm -hmm. Not entirely, not everything, 
because they also don't speak to Palestinians, but they're closer to what Palestinians think than the left of Israeli left and the left in Europe or, or America. Um, they, they, they don't ignore the, the sort of what I call the ugly side of Palestinian society, which is very uh, motivated by uh, revenge and, and violence. And there is a lot of it. It, it kind of surprised me. And I, give you, I can give you an example. Um, the first video I did about Palestinians was supposed to be a joke. It was supposed to be, I, was, I did one on the Israeli side about why did Israelis st steal hummus? Because there's this perception in, in the Arab world, the Muslim world, that Israel stole hummus. And my point was, the people who make the hummus are actually Jews who came from Arab countries. So Jews who are Syrian or Iraqi or... And I was kind of making a joke on that. Plus, actually, there's lots of Palestinians or Israeli Arabs who make hummus. I mean, that's where we eat. Mm. Um, so it's not exactly they didn't appropriate it. It's there, it was there, you know, if you're Iraqi, you made hummus for generations. I mean, if you're Jewish Iraqi. So I wanted to do something funny on the Palestinian side, and I thought, okay, there is that idea that the Arabs want to throw the Jews into the sea. And I thought, who could possibly still say that? That's ridiculous. And I was had jokes ready, how I need to learn how to swim, and how I have, you know, tell me when that's going to happen so I can pack my bags. Um, and the first guy I asked, and this is all on video, you can look it up, is he said, no, 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 there's no such thing. It's a Zionist lie. The Zionists made up this thing, this idea that the Jew Arabs want to throw the Jews in the sea. Uh, so they would gain sympathy. That's a trope that, that um, uh, Palestinians say often. You know, the Zionists look for sympathy and victimhood. Okay, fair enough. Couldn't make a joke from that, but okay. Go on to the next guy. Second guy, two feet away from the other guy, says, uh, oh, of course we want to throw them into the sea. And I was like, no, no, no. You didn't really understand me. You couldn't possibly really want to throw all the Jews in the sea. And so I got a friend of mine who was, with, he was from Italy, but he was Palestinian. I said, translate what I'm saying. And he goes, no, 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 I understood. And he translated. Mm. And he's like, no, I understood completely. Mm. I want to throw them. It's not even, you know, I want to throw them in the sea. Of course, they stole my land. I have to throw them in the sea. So at that point, I was like, wow, there's a lot more here that I don't think even I live 40 kilometers from that spot. This was like Bethlehem, so 50 kilometers away in Tel Aviv. There are a lot of things that on the other side of the border we don't know about or even some people might know about, but I didn't know about, and maybe the world wants to know about it. So, yeah. on, uh, on this uh, project, you get a lot of reactions, of course. Um, who loves it and who hates it? Um, I don't read the comments, so I don't know because the comments are horrible. People leave horrible, horrible messages. So it doesn't about both sides. Um, okay, so what I do get is every so often I get an email from from somebody in either Palestinian or in the Muslim world who says. You lie, you lying Jew, you, I, I could quote some of them, I have them in my emails. Mm. You're all liars, you're all thieves, we're going to come kill you. An Egyptian told me they're going to come slit my throat in the middle of the night. A Palestinian from Gaza told me he has friends in the West Bank, be careful, watch my back. Something like that, like he's going to tell his friends about me. And I went, yeah, whatever. Um, that doesn't happen very often, but it happens. I get actually more from the Arab world and Muslim world um, saying thank you for showing me something different about the conflict. Thank you for showing me some reality because we know we're being lied to. Um, and uh, those are the ones that actually make me really happy. I kind of don't care what, this sounds terrible, but the average European or the Americans think so much. It's more about this is something between Jews and Arabs. I kind of care more about what they think because we have to live together. I mean, of course, I have to live with Europeans and Americans too, but, but I'm more worried about them. So I'm, that's how I tend to focus on it. Um, but yeah, it's really nice to get a, an email from somebody who's from Syria or Saudi Arabia saying, thank you for showing me something different. I learned something. So how should we look at the project and the interviews? Are these uh, individuals that you interview, are they representative of uh, the uh, specific nations or uh, are they only representing themselves? Um, I, it's, they're really representing themselves in a sense, but of course sometimes they feel like they're speaking on behalf of their people. I try to get to the individual view. I try to say, no, no, no this is about you, not about your group. Uh, I try. But sometimes I can tell people are answering on behalf of everyone. Uh, some people are just giving their own opinions. Sometimes I'm not sure if they're even telling me the truth. I don't know. You can't watch one video and say, oh, that's what all Palestinians think. Oh, that's what all Israelis think. You need, if, but if you watch enough of them, after five, six videos, you get a sense of what each side, how they frame things, how they look at the world, um, how they look at the subject, subjects like peace and conflict. Uh, I think that's the most mm. interesting thing. Have you set up some rules for the project? 
for the interviews? Yeah, they're at the beginning of each video. Um, I the the people I'm asking are basically random, so I don't usually. It's, I I don't. If somebody approaches me and says, "Oh, I want to be interviewed," I, I say no. Usually, it's supposed to be random. I'm not just you know just my neighbor who is who actually I've included one or two of those just to finish off the video, um, but generally it's. People I don't know. I don't know what they're going to say exactly. Um, I try to be as um, varied as possible. Not always, not always possible because sometimes I forget who else I interviewed because I, I don't do it all in one day. I do it over time. So I try to get different age groups, different backgrounds, different education groups, uh, groups of different levels of education. Um, it, it, whatever, mostly when it's an important subject. Um, if I'm asking, you know, what's your favorite music, I, I'm going to care less about that. But if I'm asking about when did, and this is an upcoming video, when did the occupation start, I want to ask university students and the guy who sells bread on the side of the road, and I, wa I want to ask everybody in every location. Because I want to see, is there um, a difference in how people will answer each question in different mm -hmm. places. So there's that. Um, everything I film is included, everything. Other than sometimes them giving their name, I cut that out. Uh, or if they request after and it happens, please don't include my, um, what I said, and so I have to take it out. But anything they say, it doesn't matter if it look, makes Israelis look bad or Palestinians look bad, Palestinians look good, Israelis look good, it's included, it's in there. Including somebody who said horrible things about Islam once, and I had to cut out, the only time I ever cut out anything was him saying the actual sentence insulting Islam, mm -hmm. he insulted Muhammad more, but it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but I left all the rest mm -hmm. of me arguing with mm -hmm. him and him trying to justify it. And mm -hmm. I, the only reason I cut it out, and actually I had a whole debate online with friends, and some Muslims felt I should keep it mm -hmm. because it's real, and some people said no. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to cause violence. I'm not, I don't want to be responsible for causing any, any violence anywhere. So, but that's it, everything is included. Um, that's, I think those are all the rules. So let's watch some clips here. Uh, this clip we are going to watch now, it's about Israelis and Palestinians and peace and uh, the willingness to uh, compromise. So let's watch it. Culture. Are you willing to compromise for peace with Israel? And by compromise, I mean the English sense of each side gives something and each side loses something. Well, it depends what we're giving or what I'm giving. If it's something that's my right and that's mine, I'm not going to compromise. No. So, for example, are you a refugee? No. Okay. Would you, if you were a refugee, would you give your right of return for peace? No. no. Why? Because it's my land, my home. Why would I? Yeah, but that's just something in your head. That's just still. Everybody lost their land at some point. No, it's it's where I'm from. It's something that's I can't compromise for, for anything for not peace for nothing I'll okay. die uh, supporting my land and defending my land defending my right to return so you'd rather die and have and your children will die yes instead of giving up a piece of land you've never seen yes you've never been to yeah okay. are you willing to compromise compromise meaning you give something, somebody else gives something, yes, know, for peace with Israel. No. Nothing? Maybe, but, you know, because the situation right now, which is happening right now, you know, there's also the war they did before. Mm -hmm. You can't give someone who take everything from you. But you have lots of stuff here. The West no, Bank is a lot. The main problem is Jerusalem. This is, this is the main thing we need. So okay, they, they, so if you have if you have the Arab parts of Jerusalem, still Jerusalem is one. There's no two parts. It's Why? There's part. a Jewish part and there's an Arab part. Still, but it's. It and you have to have the Jewish part. Sorry, it can't, a battery died. So why is the Jewish part of Jerusalem also you have to have? Why? It's only one part, as I said before, and it's uh, the problem is what they take all by. You know, they kill people, they take it by force. They take it by force. That's, that's but you're the, saying the only way to get it back is by force too? No. So we're going to have everything and that's no, it. No, it's not like this. They have to give it back. All of Jerusalem? They can stay. They can do what It has to become want. Palestine? But this is it. They can stay, but it should be Palestine. It's but it's, they're never going to agree to that, so what's the point? 
but they would agree to giving the Arab parts back. This is maybe, I don't know, it's not actually my... No, I'm saying you, just for you, me, yes. If, for me, if they give something, yes, it's better than nothing. So if we take something, at least we can go, play there, visit it. That is, this is the, any, you can say this is the best thing we can give okay. right now. So it's okay, if they give something... You'll personally be. accept it? No, no, no. What? No. No? no. You won't accept it? For me, no. Okay, but for, other, okay. Uh, for, for you, sure. no, other people, maybe. Okay. Now we're going to watch from the Israeli side the same question. Are you willing to compromise for peace uh, with the Palestinians? To compromise uh, for peace with the Palestinians? Hell yeah. Hell yeah? Yes. <laughs> okay, what, are you, what is that compromise? To you, what does that mean? Well, I'm a businessman. And in business, if you want to make money, you got to pay for it. Like you got to rent a place, you got to pay for workers, okay. uh, you got to sacrifice in order to be able to, to get make, something. To get something. Um, nothing is more important than peace. So if we can compromise a little bit and still be secure in our, our country, I believe that we should. But there's a limit to that compromise. For example, for them, the compromise is that all the um, uh, refugees, five million refugees outside in Lebanon, in Syria, in um, Jordan, can come back to what's today Israel. To them, that's the compromise. Again, I'm not a big expert, but I know that in order to get something, you need to sacrifice something. Mm -hmm. And in order to get peace, I believe we're gonna have to sacrifice something. As long as we stay secure as a Jewish country, so we don't get screwed like we did in the past. Mm -hmm. So I believe that we should compromise to a certain level, as long as we're secure. That's what I believe. Okay, that's your red line, security. האם אתה מוכן להתפשר תמורת שלום עם פלסטינאים? להתפשר? מה הפשרה? אתה יודע. ברור. אוקיי. בשבילך מה הפשרה? כשאתה שומע מה אתה מוכן לעשות, כאילו מה הפשרה הזו? אני הייתי מוכן, כאילו מה, להחזיר שטחים בקטע של מה? אישיות? איך שאתה רואה את זה. יש פה אנשים מפגרים ברקע. הייתי מוכן להחזיר שטחים, הייתי מוכן לדבר ולעשות ויתורים מקפים. Um, I mean, you gave sort of the harder view of the Palestinians mm -hmm. and the softer view of the Israelis, mm -hmm. but sort of overall. So, yeah, so on the Palestinian side, I would say, just guessing from what I've met, 40%, 50% would have what you heard. No, we don't give up. Or we maybe give up a little, but very, very little. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's, you do have people who are, are much more open to compromise, but it's really a very small percentage, and then there's an, like maybe 5%, 10%, that's my feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another, let's say the 40%, 50% I'm talking about between those two, who are kind of have a foot in each place, like meaning they publicly state, yes, we right of return, all Palestinians must return to the original spot they were from, it doesn't matter if Tel Aviv University exists on that spot, you have to knock it down and you have to put their village there, stuff, I mean, very, yeah, what I would say is on, Compromising and unrealistic, I mean, I would think. Um, but at the same time, they're also willing to compromise, maybe. Meaning if a, a strong leader came and told them, which no leader has ever told them, ever, that they have to compromise, by the way. Arafat never did, Abu Mazen never did, ever. On the Israeli side, you heard sort of a little bit more of the central soft leftish, um, where... But the other side, the, the more, I'd say that's, you know, like another 30% sort of further right of that, um, would be, you're going to get a certain percentage of no, we will never compromise, but I would say that's actually very small. You get another solid, and I consider my actual, my, my family, or my ex's family, <laughs> but I consider family, um, in this camp of, on the surface, no, you can't trust them. And then when you dig down, you say, well, what does that mean? If you can guarantee your safety and security as, as people, as a group of Jews, um, are you then willing to think about returning the, let's say, the West Bank or making it independent in some sense? Then they say, yeah, if I could really trust them, 
if I really believed that I could live my life the way I wanted to and it would be uh, have a normal existence, I wouldn't have to worry about um, about terrorism. I wouldn't have to worry about them coming to kill me uh, at any moment. Then yes, I would be willing to. But I've hardened my views because of, in this case, it's the Second Intifada, which really hurt any prospect of peace at this moment. Um, so in general, yeah, you have on the Palestinian side much less willingness to for any compromise in any way, and on the Israeli side much more openness to the nuances of compromise, of finding um, some way to make it happen so that everyone is somewhat um, happy with the result. You do find more, even if on the, on the surface, and that's why, that's another thing I forgot to mention before, I always ask um, questions, follow-up questions, yes. um, on purpose, because how someone answers on the surface is not necessarily the whole picture. So I test it out always. So that I find with Israelis is they'll say, no, I don't trust the Palestinians. There shouldn't be a Palestinian state, period. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, but let's pretend the Palestinians became very, very sort of passive in the sense of they're not going to try to kill you anymore. Um, would you then consider it? You as a Jew can understand why a person would want uh, to have independence. And they say, yes, I can understand that. Yes, you know, I wish I could believe in them. I just can't. And if they maybe prove to me, then yes, maybe I would change my mind. On the Palestinian side, I find... It's, it's much less of that. It's much more, it's very black and white. It's very, it's all or nothing. Um, and it, there's, I think there are cultural reasons for that, but yeah. that's harder to dig into. So uh, let's talk about the concept of peace. Is that different in Israel and the Palestinian territories? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, Israelis seem to see peace the way most Westerners would see peace, the absence of violence. You know, I walk out of my house, I'm safe. No one tries to blow up my bus. There's no war coming from from the neighboring country. Um, absence of violence. That's peace, more or less. Uh, to Palestinians, it's much more about justice. It's about returning something that they've lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, until they get that sense of justice, there cannot be peace. Mm -hmm. um, and it's much more tied to that that element. And even within that. Um, there's not much compromise in terms of justice. So it depends who you ask and, and what. So some people would accept maybe there'd be a Palestinian state in the West Bank, and that to them is a form of justice. We get to create our own country. Uh, but more often, or at least a, a large, uh, sizable amount of Palestinians are like, no, until I personally, as a refugee, return to the home of my grandfather, which I've never been to and I've never seen, until I return to that piece of land, there cannot be peace, period. And that's a hard one to, because what do you do with that? Yeah. So what is your message to the European nations that are very much, I would say, involved in this conflict? I don't know. Um, part of me wants to say, guys, butt out. <laughs> because really it should be, and that, this is what I want to tell Palestinians and Israelis, and they don't really believe this either, but it doesn't matter. I wish we would, you know, Palestinians and Israelis could really just sit at a table and just figure this out without all the influences of Iran on one side and the United States on the other side. I mean, it gets, I know everyone wants, and of course, I want everyone to support my side. Of course, everyone wants that. Um, but I think it would make it much easier if we just had to deal with each other. Um, on the other hand, maybe we're at a point, because those people have sat in the room, and I happen to know people who sat in that room when negotiations were going on. And um, I don't know if we're ready for, for any compromises, um, and more so from the Palestinian side, I would say, actually, because the people sat in those rooms were actually the Israelis on the left who were much more open to compromise, and the Palestinians were much more, fine, we have to be here because we have no choice. We're forced into this. Or we kind of, we want peace, but we're not sure how to get there, and I don't feel comfortable giving up anything. So I feel like they're not fully cooked in that sense. They're not really there, whereas the Israelis, at least on the left, were there. Um, so the other part of me wants, yeah, does kind of want the Americans and the Europeans to get involved and, and just push them into something for, in, in some way. I don't know if that's going to work, though. I have a, a sense that being pushed into it when you're not ready um, is probably not a good thing. But part of me, because I, you know, honestly, I, I deal with, as much as I have a lot of criticism for Palestinians, I have friends on that side. And I feel bad that they don't have... A regular life. They cannot. They have no uh, stability in their lives. Everything is controlled by Israeli governments or what Israel has to say. They have this um, PA system, Palestinian Authority system, which doesn't treat them very well. Um, and 
uh, uh, it gives them all these these crazy issues just living under this because in certain areas they're allowed to live and in other areas you can't really build a new for example if you wanted to build a new city you have to get permission from the Israelis and there's no sense of of, of agency uh, for them they don't feel any sense of pow empowerment mm -hmm. um, and everyone should feel empowered everyone in every in, in any situation whether you know it's Catalan or you know or or Israelis or, or Palestinians we all want to feel like you know this is our country and this is you know we want we want to feel a sense of, of belonging and and they don't really have that and part of it is their own issues there's a lot of issues in Palestinian society that they're constantly fighting with and part of it is because of the fact that Israel conquered them yeah. um, so part of me really wants to see that end for their sake and another part of me says well even if it ends we're still gonna get rockets on Ben Gurion Airport and I know that'll happen I know absolutely it'll happen maybe it's just something they have to go through and, and get out of their system I don't know so I don't have an I don't have a very good answer on that. Um, I don't know how to get to peace. I really I don't see much hope to get to peace. Um, I just I really wish you know the best for for both sides. Yeah. So when will you put down your camera? So when will you finish this project? I don't know. Is uh, it ever everlasting? Project? I don't think it's ever done, and I might get bored at some point. For now, no. I love doing it. I have a great time doing it. I learn so much. I mean, it's. It's one of the great things about Israelis and Palestinians is they'll tell you anything. I mean, it's terrific in that sense compared to Sweden. <laughs> Nobody wants to tell me anything. Um, so, like, I'll, people have told me family stories, horrible, horrible things that have happened to them and their families on video, and they're in the, they're in the videos. Um, and I didn't even ask that question. Um, you get to know people and what they think and why they think that way, and you get to hear about a lot about history and where they come from. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that's so it's always interesting I mean every time sometimes I approach a person I think oh I know what he's gonna say and I'm usually wrong usually not just about sometimes I'm right about the opinion ish but they always say something that surprises me so it, it makes it a lot of fun and mm -hmm. interesting and I think it's important I don't see anyone else doing this mm -hmm. um, what surprises me mm -hmm. I wish more people would actually do something very similar mm -hmm. I like being having a monopoly on it but you know I um, I would love to see other people doing something very similar. Um, but um, for now, I'll just keep doing it until I can. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming here. It was very interesting to hear what you have to say. And uh, how can people support your project? Oh, uh, first of all, watch. Watch the videos. Um, if you have the money, um, please donate because I do this all out of my pocket. Um, it's very helpful. The within, let's say, I'm in Tel Aviv, or if I have to go to Haifa for a party or something, party. I'm too old for a party. But if I go to Haifa for something, I always bring my camera and I ask people questions. So I do it as, uh, as I go through life. But if to get to the West Bank, I have to. It's transportation. It's either renting a car. I have to have a translator. I have to pay her. Um, that takes money. So yeah, any anything anyone can give is always appreciated. Uh, and spreading the word, um, and uh, and and if you happen to be on the ground, if you're Israeli or Palestinian and you see this, please answer the questions and answer them honestly. I really want to know what people think. So it's another thing. So thank you very much for having me. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I'm not used to this. <laughs>